Hello everybody, welcome back to the Feature Crew. If you've been on Twitter at all today, you've seen that Gemini has released an upgraded version of Gemini 2.5 Pro, which was already arguably the best coding model, and the claim is that it's even better at coding, and that's what we're seeing on Twitter, so we're super excited to give it a try today. We're gonna to do so in the Gemini chat client. We saw also on Twitter from Logan Kilpatrick that the new model should just directly replace the existing model. So we'll give that a try in the client and we'll put it through spaces. We're gonna kick it off with the city sim experience. We've, we've done this before in our O3 mini comparison video between O3 and 2.5. Uh, we had to explore a city. We had eventually started to break down a bit. So excited to see if the update today makes a big change in this test. So as always, we'll link the prompt in the chat, but in general, we're asking it to make a city. We're trying to leave it a little open-ended to see if it can drive things like NPC behavior. Are the roads correct? Are cars traveling on the roads? What kind of graphics does it give us? Uh, and let's take a look. So while this is running and thinking to give everybody a refresher, this is where we ended our comparison video before. We ended up with these sort of black buildings. There was a shader problem that developed, uh, but it did end up having artifacts you could collect. They were sort of sparsely scattered around, so we didn't end up collecting them all to see if it rewarded us at all, but it does count them up in the upper right. It had these kind of funky looking lamp posts that looked pretty cool from a top-down perspective, but when we started going to first person, uh, they showed some, some flaws. It's not exactly Grand Theft Auto 6. <laughs> and just as a reminder, the first prompts that we do are with city gen, and then we often give a challenge round where it becomes first person. So mm -hmm. don't expect the first prompt to look like this, Go check out the video if you wanted to see how we iterated through. See what happens here. Oh, look at that. Hey, yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Whoa. They're like lightning through. Um, but looks kind of similar to what it originally had, right? That right. same kind of style, it's cozy yeah. game-like. It's, it's different, right, with the trees and everything. Um, and the lighting is now going, nighttime is fully nighttime. Right. Um, but very similar. Like very similar. It even has a similar issue where some of the buildings are placed in the middle of the roads. So. Yep, 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 yep. And then the cars are kind of like weirdly driving and stuff, but yeah. But way better prompt adherence. Like it mm -hmm. got more mm -hmm. features in the first go than yep. our last round did. I don't think we had trees come through in the first one. I think the uh, light posts weren't added until our second iteration in the last video. And so this is pretty encouraging and I'm very excited to see what it does as we continue to push it. Mm. And Chris is now just playing around with the toggles. It does look like the toggles are working. At least the game yep. speed is changing, which is impressive. I wonder, do we have to regenerate city? We we'll probably have to regenerate. Let's, let's do a yeah. super dense city. Okay. Well. And if we crank it way I'm down. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it is, it, the controls do function, right? It mm -hmm. is. I like uh, that the logic of our roads a little wanting. Yeah. It's tried to think about it not being a pure grid. Tried to introduce a bit of randomness. So, hey, like it good first attempt here hasn't regressed seems to be adhering a little bit better the fact that it's followed the prompt and you know started by adding more like sliders that actually work i'd give that kind of a plus i think this is the most controls we've gotten out of the box from a model i might be wrong on that but i think that is true normally we have to prompt for more controls get our bigger city now to dylan's point cars are still all over the place they're not exactly adhering to the road maybe that's the first thing we ask it to improve we're going to give it a little iteration on what we've seen so some of the things we saw the buildings and trees are sometimes on the road and cars do not follow the road additionally can you add weather events and give us a control for them in the ui please also add npcs and a slider to control the population we also gave it a screenshot of what we're seeing so it can hopefully uh fix it well, let's send so it we're trying to focus a bit more on functionality here. You know, graphics are already looking not too bad, but we're interested to see along this adherence to the prompt, can we add multiple things in one kind of like vibe code? And then we'll probably follow up with either like a graphic overhaul or maybe doing the first person to push it. All right, here is our city. I would like to get us to a day cycle. There we go. Cars are on the road. Cars are on the road. And the buildings do seem to be better. better. And the parks seem to be overlapping a little bit just because of the big green square. But And the, yeah, they're not perfectly aligned, right? Yeah, like, yeah. We oh, got our cylindrical people hanging out. They're not moving, really. Unless they're just very slowly moving. because of the. I uh, could move the time up. Let's see. Oh, they do move. Look yeah, at that. They, they move, move a lot they're slower. Yeah. Much slower. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I still see cars going off the road, though, right? You see these yeah. guys. Driving through buildings. Yeah. So it didn't quite fix that. And then let's try weather effect as well. So right now it says weather effect none. I like that they've chosen a... Oh, we got rain. Down. The rain kind of works. We have uh, snow. Hey. Snow's looking nice. Not accumulating, but hey, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. And then fog. 
I'm not seeing fog. Oh, I guess if I zoom out, I see fog. Or is that just drop off? Is that just view distance? I'm not really seeing something I would categorize as fog. We're, we're impressed that it was able to like adhere to our feedback and, and successfully implement pretty much everything with the exception of you know the fog wasn't really visible. But, but again, it, it, it was like keeping with the spirit of our prompt. And so uh, very impressive performance so far. What we want to do is do our normal challenge mode and really push it and get kind of vibe Cody. So we're going to ask for first person as always, and we're going to ask for some game mechanics. In this case, we'll have things scattered around the map that you can collect. And to add some challenge, we want to add collisions. So uh, we want to make it so if cars collide with each other, they're destroyed. We want to make it if cars collide with NPCs, the NPC dies. And we want to make it that if cars collide with the player, the player dies. So that means that as they're going and collecting things, there's actually a challenge that they have to avoid. Let's send it. Hey, it says it says it's a very exciting direction. A <laughs> little bit of personality there. There we go. All right. Cool. Uh, so it says it has accomplished the task. We'll see if we drop into a first person experience. Okay. City collect. We are in first person. Collect the spinning gems. Avoid cars. Do I have a tilt effect when I turn? Yeah. That happens a lot. The model. That's kind of wild. They sometimes struggle. I don't think that was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They like misinterpret how to do. If anybody on the platform owns a German Shepherd. This is how they look at things, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I like the floating icosahedrons. Uh, I got one. I score one. Cow. Let's collide with a car <laughs> to see, because it looked like it said you could uh, die. So let's see if we can confirm that. I'm just trying to turn, bro. <laughs> Come here, car. Hit me. Please end my suffering. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yes. Here we go. yes. Oh, um, I don't know. That looked like a hit to me. Yeah. Because it looked like it I cannot turn all the way around. This is wild. Yeah. yeah. So, it, okay. So, okay. We're starting to see it fall apart a little bit. Uh, you know, it got the, sort of the spirit of the prompt, but it, it hit some classic LLM issues where yeah. it couldn't fully implement the player controls, and then uh, it seems to have not gotten the collisions quite yeah. correct. Yeah, but pretty good showing. You know, like, not, not the worst, not the best, um, but certainly pretty good like yeah, you know uh, if someone was like oh i want to use gemini 2.5 pro like new one for coding i'd be like seems to perform pretty well based yes. on this but i but yeah. we're not seeing a like massive step, step change, change difference no. um no. so let's let's move on to business reasoning which was a, a, a test that i think gemini traditionally was a little worse at mm -hmm. than competitors so we'll see if the, this new model was able to sort of lift up its business reasoning ability if you remember in one of our newer videos for business reasoning we are now trying to fold these state-of-the-art models that have tool calling we instead of providing a pdf attachment or some long context we're trying to do it in two parts the first part being give us an info dump on a topic in this case we want to see all the state-of-the-art ai models from big tech companies so we're kind of prompting it to say use your web search and think about it then we give a follow-up to say okay with the information you just found find some novel insights and render with charts so go ahead and execute code and show everything so this is kind of a, a next step for business reasoning where we're now really relying on its tool calling. So for older models, this doesn't hold, but for these newer kind of more impressive models, we're doing this kind of added challenge. Yep. So let's see how Gemini does on this first informational retrieval part. Do we press our big deep research button? No. No. No, okay. It gave a result here, uh, but it also prompted us to try deep research, which is interesting. So sort of upselling to the bigger the bigger search function. Mm. Uh, Maybe should I? 2.5 Pro. Five series, full mini instruct. Yep. Five full reasoning. Oh man, it's it's done pretty well. Okay. Is your AI foundry? My note so far would be that it really didn't collect a lot of information about the model. It's true. It just collected That's their correct. Just... and like their parameter yep. counts. It did a good job of finding all the models. In fact, a better job than the O series models at, at finding a comprehensive list yep. of models available. Um, and, and a comprehensive list of model providers. What it didn't do was get any really useful information about those models for the most part. Uh, mm -hmm. It was mostly citing parameter counts, uh, which is you know, very high level and doesn't and really news help you. and stuff like that. Yeah, news. Yeah. So we're going to do a follow up here to get it to uh, actually go and grab benchmark results yeah. and maybe more actionable data. So then when we ask it to go make charts and, and deliver recommendations, that those recommendations are based on something other than just the names of the models. We're gonna follow up, have it focus on models released this year, collect benchmark results and any other information that could help companies make decisions on which model to use for which type of task. All right, uh, it came back very quick on this. So I don't know if it just used its existing sources or what, but uh, Seems like it did a lot of work. Looks like it did well to kind of pull out. It's really just focused on Google first, which is maybe. And then the Metalama 4. Metalama 4. 
April 2025 kind of checks out. I mean, I'm, I'm imagining open AI. Yeah, yeah. And then open AI. Or many great. Yep. Like this is looking like all our last most recent videos, which is yep. a success, right? Yep. I think we're in a good spot to now give the next follow up. Based on the information you pulled, conduct a detailed analysis comparing the latest models. Please visualize improvements in model performance to make it obvious what's been happening. Project out what you think model performance will be through charts and walk through your thinking process. Also make recommendations for what a small to medium sized business should use as part of their tech transition and why. All right, send it. Okay, so the first chart, uh, conceptual AI model capability improvement over time. It's graphing kind of funny numbers here. Yeah. Like uh, it did pull a bunch of real numbers in its research, but then uh, we noticed in the prompt that it realized, oh, I didn't get all the same benchmarks for each uh, for each different model, so I can't directly compare them. So it created this illustrative capability score. We're, we're going to open source these results to if you want to dig through and see how it de decided to collapse all those scores down. For now, I think it's like it's an interesting illustrative graph. It's getting the point home. But is this super high business value? This first chart, probably not. No. Right. Okay, chart two, predictions. Interesting. And again, it's still using the illustrative capability performance score. Yeah. It's tried to project out. You know, I, I think the intent here is to separate what you know versus what you don't know, but it's also using funny numbers. So we've seen uh, OpenAI variant models perform quite a bit better here, mm -hmm. thinking about how to present the information better. So these charts aren't super impressive. It's lumping 4.0, 4.5, and the O series into one column. Yeah, yes. Is like, yes. those yeah. are incredibly different models. Yeah, it, it, literally not reasoning. It's also obvious. glazing itself hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's not justifying any of these things, but it's just saying, yeah, I, Gemini 2.5, am the best at everything. Yeah. But without the data points, and we know from, like, I've made these slides before. Uh, Gemini doesn't win in every category. It's yeah. a very impressive model, but it doesn't win in every benchmark. And right. so 100%. this, again, we're, we're seeing where... Uh, uh, this might be a state-of-the-art coding model, but we're starting to see this world where you know some models might be state-of-the-art at one thing and not at other things, and that's totally okay. And we'll yeah. and we'll yeah. see how they all evolve over time. We'll just finish up by looking at the conclusions. Um, again, it's given a lot of conclusions, which is one of the things we called out that we hopefully were trying to. When it said novel insights, not just regurgitate okay. everything, which is kind of a classic LM mm -hmm. thing. Um, so guiding principles, it gave some here, but model performance recommendation for small business. It started with Copilot, which is interesting, mm -hmm. saying, hey, if you have an existing Microsoft license, like you might as well use that. Right. Interesting. Right on. Google Workspace. Uh, Google Workspace, the course comes in there. Yeah. Um, no part of this response is useful, to be yeah. to be very honest. The search yeah. part was uh, very good. Was useful. Very, yeah. very good. And yep. it uh, and it was, as we were saying, running faster. So we're starting to see Google enter the agentic field. With their own it's, strength, right? Like, and then and the that's great. sort of complex, like, but the complex reasoning isn't quite there yet. No. The the real agency of using a bunch of different tools is not quite there yet. Uh, and so excited to see how these models progress when you get that sort of coding ability plus the agentic ability. Okay, so for our next test, we're gonna do our maze test. Uh, this is kind of our hardest test we have. I mean, I suppose some of our coding tests are quite hard, but we've seen models struggle with this a lot. This is really testing agentic reasoning. We're gonna give you a maze and we expect you to be able to find the best path through. I think the current leaderboard is 03. Uh, someone in our comments managed to get it to run on a 20 by 20 maze. Mm -hmm. In our test, I think we got it to 17 by 17. We tend to start a little lower than that. Dylan, where do you want to start? What do you want to do? Let's go 15. Uh, Jim and I should be kind of approaching the O series. So we should expect it to be at this level. Otherwise, it's a little bit under. So I'm really more interested to how it's comparing to say open and tier. Do we want to give it the prompt and the image? Let's give it both. Okay. So we're gonna give it its best shot, we're gonna give it the prompt itself, and then we're also gonna take a quick screenshot to give it the best possible chance. Interesting, it's very fast. Uh, it just seemed to, it did use it. Let's go ahead and copy paste that in. Um, I know There's it, no way, right? I don't even know what this yeah. is. I don't. <laughs> it seemed to get kind of confused. Okay, that's interesting that it didn't perform at 15. Let's crank it way down to say 10 um, and give it one more shot. Um, Quite surprised that it, you know, didn't do too well. Again, copy prompt, give it the image. Sometimes Should I just try the image. I'm wondering if the prompt gets sort of scrunched by the canvas and that's mm. why we're seeing some problems. Yep, 100%. Let's, so let's actually maybe just give it the image of 10 by 10 and say, can you solve this? So just giving it the image itself, seeing if that, that helps us out. And this seems better. The fact that I didn't auto start printing random coordinates. It's interesting that it did that. Um, well, it's still thought not that long. Um, it understood. 
Yeah, it looks, we'll I mean, we're giving it the, a lot of benefit of the doubt here. Look, OpenAI was able to do this with just the prompt itself. Let's see. Yeah, it does ask. Yeah. No. Fascinating. So it's really not understood how to kind of invoke its tools, think of it with coding and stuff. So, I mean, kind of to our point of maybe not being, like, it seems pretty good for coding, but, you know, to say it's like way better at reasoning, it's not really pulling out the business that. reasoning side. And this kind of quote unquote world understanding side of things seems to be falling down a bit. Quite curious to see how it performs in a windsurf or cursor. I think uh, mm. leave a comment down below if you guys want to see that. Maybe see some vibe coding episodes where we compare sort of in IDE experience with these models. Mm -hmm. So let us know and let us know if you want to see us use it in in those environments. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Please do like, follow, subscribe. Um, we really appreciate the support. We just hit over 2,000 subscribers. So thank you so much yeah. for following along. Really, really excited. We'll hopefully do some live streams and other kind of vibe coding stuff soon. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Cheers, everybody.